Welcome back to Resident Evil HD on Nintendo Switch. Why are we always starting in the same exact room every time? Whatever. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to put our surplus of ink ribbons away, and I think we're going to... Can we do anything with this jewelry box? Because I don't really think we can. I mean, never mind! We hit the wrong switch. Okay. Cool. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have some, we're probably gonna have some backtracking right away. Because I want to go use these masks. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take one trip out to deliver these masks to the uh, outdoor area where we got the uh, initial key. And then we're gonna come back here and get the other mask so we can complete everything with it. And if I do anything or act differently at all while I'm playing today, that's because I recently started using the Nitro Deck Plus peripheral on my Nintendo Switch again. I actually, I used it for quite a while when I first got it, but it really bugged me when that peripheral first came out because the, despite having a mobile app where you could like do a bunch of tweaks and stuff, the, uh, the ZR button or R2, if you're using PlayStation terminology, would be extra sensitive. Like I would rest my finger on it and I would barely even be touching it at all and it would activate. So like I'd be running around, you know, in a shooting game and just like running around with my fingers just barely grazing and resting on top of the button, I would start shooting. Or like um, in Beyond Good and Evil, the that 20th anniversary edition, that was the first game I played with it. And I would constantly boost in the ship over and over and over again. And it bugged the crap out of me. But recently, they fixed it. If you have a Nitro Deck Plus, if you go into the CRKD mobile app on iOS or Android and the, like sync your peripheral up to it, you can update the firmware and it completely fixes the problem. Like right now, I am like resting my finger and pushing it down a little bit and nothing's happening. I have to actually push it down all the way to actually get it to register that I'm doing it. Chris, what are you doing? Chris, what are you doing? This is hilarious. This is hilarious. Okay, okay, I actually, actually, this this reminds me of a really funny story. Like, because Chris keeps moving over and over again. This, this, work, this is a funny story. So, I work for Walmart in asset protection. But, you know, like, being AP, you have to do all of the trainings that everybody else in the store has to do. And Walmart uh, created these VR trainings. They're kind of like really small indie VR games. And uh, one of them had you like picking uh, um, an object in the room for a scenario. So like, you know, I picked, picked it and then ever, as everything was uh, playing out with the scenario saying here's what happened because of what you chose here's what's here's what's going on um you still had control while that long uh, cinematic sequence was playing out so i just started playing around i started moving the mouse around and i picked up an item and i noticed that if i picked up a picked up an item and i held the left uh button down on the mouse my character or the pov slowly moved backwards and I accidentally broke the whole, you know, game in quotations for the training. So like, it reminds me of this cause like, so I just held it. I just kept holding it, wanting to see how far it would go. And it went out of the room. Like the VR was simulating a building, like a store. It went out of the room. I could see the, the entire world that wasn't developed at all. Oh, it was, it was it was so much fun for me for me for me. I thought it was I thought it was hilarious because I love playing indie games and breaking them. 
And, uh, no, it, it was just so much fun. It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm leaving the room. So I left the room, and it showed, like, a little developed hallway right outside of the room that wasn't part of the training. And it just kept going and going until, you know, out of the building. And it's... I wanted, I, I wanted to go further, but the, uh, the training transitioned to the next scene before I could, like, completely leave the whole plane that the game had made. It was, it was, it was kind of fun. For me, for me. I thought, it, I thought it was real funny. But yeah, like, Chris moving like that, when I keep hitting the R2 button here, it kind of reminds me of that movement in, in that training sequence. Anyways, let's actually go and do what we're supposed to be doing here. So we got four masks to, br to put here. So let's see, a stone statue with a hole where the eyes should be. So I'm assuming this needs to be the mask without eyes. Yes. All right. This is a mask where the eyes, nose, and mouth should be. So like mask with nothing. So not that one. Let's go to the next one. A stone statue with a hole where the nose should be. All right, so that's going to be the nose statue. Okay. Yeah, this big coffin. Is there a vampire in this coffin? Wouldn't that be fun? All right, next one should be the mouth one. Yep, a stone statue with a hole where the mouth should be. So we're going to put that mask there. It is not necessary to use this mask. Really? Interesting. So, do we use it here? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Now I have to leave, and we're going to go back to that save room. We're going to uh, pick that last mask back up, and we will move on. I'm hoping that today, I'm hoping that this is going to be leaving the mansion. This is a shortcut, isn't it? Is this a shortcut? I don't remember. Yes, this is a shortcut. We don't need to go through this door. Oh, no, no, this is fine. This is fine. This is how we came here, so it's fine. Sorry about the uh, random rant with talking about, you know, retail trainings and stuff. But it just reminded me of that. And it was, you know, it was a kind of funny story for me. Are there any more herbs in here? If there are, we'll go ahead and stockpile them for the box. Since we have... No. Okay. Never mind. Whatever. We must have taken all of them. Not that we're in need of healing items, but I figured, you know, while we're here, might as well stockpile as many resources as possible, even though, as we all know from pretty much every single Resident Evil playthrough I've done on this channel since I started the series, I always have way more resources than I ever need to use. Because, like, even more recent plays of it. Because, like, on the main channel a couple weeks ago, I streamed the GOG version of Resident Evil 3. When I swapped over and decided to use the grenade launcher for the rest of the game, I just, uh... Anything else we need to take with us? Let's grab the wind crest. I think we're going to need that sometime soon. But, like, the last time I played Resident Evil 3, I swapped over to the grenade launcher pretty late in the game, and I used less than half of my grenade rounds before I completely finished the game. Where I'm just like, I can keep going and be fine with the shotgun from here. And then get to the point of, oh, I had way too many resources. I think when I played Resident Evil 1, I had over 100 uh, pistol ammo just bought forever boxed because I had gotten to the point where I didn't need to use the pistol anymore. I had so much ammo for, you know, the shotgun, a bazooka, etc. What was that? Something sparkle over here? Oh, no, it's just the lighting. Okay, never mind. 
Onward! But I feel like literally all of the old games that I've played so far, I've had resources to spare. Because even when I played Code Veronica, the last one we played, we had extra, technically we had extra resources because we accidentally left Claire with the glitch infinite use herb and the grenade launcher with the grenade launcher ammo. So I wasn't even able to use it, but I didn't even need to. I Now I did run through all of the uh, shotgun shells and magnum rounds I had in that final boss fight, but still, if I had given, given that extra stuff to Claire and not realizing that Claire was gonna be locked off from the story, I wasn't able to get that stuff back, I would have had Buku ammo to spare. All right, so we're uh, going for this last one. Uh, let's let's equip the shotgun. I don't remember what happens in here. I don't remember if we get ambushed or something. Okay. Hello, coffin. Oh, there's a crimson head in here. That we're locked in with. Oh, look, he's got a beard and everything. That's cool. Hold on. Take this, you fiend! Ow. Rude. Stab! Are you dead? Okay, he's dead. Good. We'll swap back to the handgun now. Can I get my dagger back? Nope. Unfortunate. Do I have any self-defense? Oh, crap. We don't have any self-defense items left. What we got here? Ooh, that's pretty. Wait a minute. I know what this is. Not just any object. Examine. An emblem is carved on it. Wait a minute. I think I know where to use this. Interesting. It's on the east side of the mansion, right across from the crow room. That is quite interesting because if it's the room I'm thinking of, that's a room that we normally don't, like in the original Resident Evil, you don't get to visit until you return to the mansion later on. I mean, it's fine, I guess. It's interesting. It's different. Okay. Whoa! Is that a crimson head? Is that a regular zombie? That's... Back, you fiend! You dead? Nope. Well, anyway, Spencer family emblem. Let's use the emblem on the door, right? It's not necessary to use this now. Okay! So that's not what this is used for. Oh! Hold on. It's used out here, isn't it? Yeah. I was... Hold on. Just listening to see if there were any dogs here. Because we're... Not great on ammo. Because we spent so much trying to kill that zombie. There we go. Yeah, the replacement for the crests to open up and get us out of the mansion. All right, so we are leaving the mansion today. Sweet. We're only 14 minutes in. First aid spray. Um, we should probably be careful about what we pick up in here. Shotgun shells. Screw it, I'm picking up the shotgun shells. Yeah.
You know what? Let's use the first aid spray and grab this one. Hello? Or not. Whatever. Now there should be... Let's see. Okay, so no herbs back here. Brad. Alpha team. Come in. Does anybody hear me? This is Chris. This is Brad. The Stars Alpha team. Bravo team. It doesn't matter. Respond. I repeat. This is Br Brad. This is Chris. Brad. Damn. Things broken. Yeah, sorry about that, Chris. Here there's the dogs and there's the herbs. Get off of me, you stupid dog. Oh, wow, there's three here. Yeah, let's just run. Knock it off, you stupid dogs. We don't have the resources right now with us to be able to fight them and not run out of ammo. All right, what we got here? Is the water down? The water is down, which means we need a crank. Um, I guess we could go through the shotgun ammo. We've got that extra bit. I'd just rather not use it. And it would be kind of foolish to just run around all these dogs constantly. Let's go down here. See if there's anything down here. That's where the elevator comes up. Where's the uh, where's the crank at? I mean, well, I mean, admittedly, we didn't get hit there. Gardening supplies. So, what's the deal with this? We're just not allowed to go that way? I don't get it! Unless it's only for short people. I feel like maybe it's that uh, shelf up in front of it that's letting you not go over there. Um, Is there nothing we can interact with over there? I know in the original we had stairs that you had to push to be able to get to it.
Is there something I'm missing here? Let's look at the map. Hold on. It looks like there are stairs in this room. Come up here. Over here. Oh! That's why I couldn't pick that stuff up! Hold on. Flashbang. Okay, we have a defensive item again. I didn't even think of that being there as stairs. Oh, right. This is the new the new outside area. We have... I think there's like a little building down here. Wesker? What monster in trains? Stay away from the woods outside the mansion. That's where we are! Right? Ooh, spoopy howling in the background. That's fun. The gate will open when the guard dog's desires are fulfilled. Okay. Guard dog's desires, huh? Well, let's look at the map again and see if there's an alternate. No, it looks like it's a, a pretty much just a straight path. Any way to get off the beaten path? Anything we can interact with here? Oh, that's cool. You can like see the mansion, the side of the mansion from there. That's a cool, that's a cool little uh, shot. It seems to be some kind of signpost. Each direction is accompanied by a destination. North, Valley of Destruction. South, Cave of Hatred. East, Summit of Madness, West, Path of Revenge. We'll screenshot that in case we need to do something for that. Are you sure there's nothing else here? So we go down that way. We pretty much explored everything here. There wasn't really anything... Oh! Try west. I mean south. So that was south. That was north. We want to go on east, maybe. To make it, like, face the same direction as the other one. Okay. Did that work? No. No. Maybe having that one face the other one? Unless the other one can move. 
Okay, okay, okay. So we know the red one is um, revenge. I think it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the... The guard one... The uh, red one needs to be west. Okay. North, maybe? There we go. We solved it. Onward we go. That was weird. It, like, direct cut to the door sequence instead of fading out like all the other ones does. Oh, hi, Crows. How's it going? Looks like a couple of routes here. Leave me alone, Crows. It's an interesting door sequence, like, with the doors already damaged and lopsided to begin with. Hola. Obviously, we already know what that is. I've played this game before, so I know that this is a brand new enemy that they added for the remake. Very interesting character. And to be honest, with... Most of the time, the Resident Evil games aren't really that scary, but this is kind of creepy. Like, with the, uh... The sound of chains and just, like, the atmosphere right here. It's like, you're outside, it's kind of spooky, you got that, like, kind of creepy wind noise going on in the background. So let's go in here. There was another path we could take, so we might go back to that. See, this place this place looks creepy too. Got a fireplace here. We got a uh, a number of bandages has been could these brown stains be blood? All right, we got a map of the courtyard now. Oh, hey, a save room. Maybe? Is it like a fully fledged save room or just... A family picture and some notes. My dearest Lisa. 19. Daddy attached first, mom attached second, inside red and slimy, white and hard, not true mom wear. Dunno dad, found mom again. Something attached mommy, she moved no more, she's screaming, why, just want to be with her. Mom wear, I miss you. That's creepy. It's an old typewriter. Crude bed, doesn't look like anybody's used it in a long time. Ah, oh, there we go. There's our item box. Let's go ahead and pop this out so we can reload that. Then we'll put that away and that away. And I guess we'll just get the ink ribbons out so we can save. So this is a com these areas are completely new to the remake. These were not here in the original at all. And we're finally saving in a new place. Crazy. All right, let's put the ink ribbons away. And move on. Cool. 
There's the square crank. So this is kind of like, you know, little things that the remake did to make you have more things to do. Because, you know, you could beat the original Resident Evil in like, what, like three hours? How long have we been going in this one? Quite a while so far, right? We're not even to the uh, guardhouse yet. Well, if my Wi-Fi wants to work, we can eventually figure out how long we've done this game so far. So we've got, we're in episode five right now. So we got 58 minutes, 45, 50, 49. So one, two, three, four. We're probably close to like the four, four and a half hour mark right now. Hello? Hola? Who's there? Nobody? You see this? See? See? This is this is this is this is actually legitimately creepy and scary. Like you're trapped in this in this, you know, worn down house with very, you know, narrow passageways in it. This is this is legitimately creepy. I think this is probably the most creeped out I've been in a Resident Evil game. Outside of like stuff that happens in seven and eight, because most Resident Evil games are like jump scares. It's really just jump scares. Or I hope there isn't a zombie in the next room. But this actually like, you know, like I, I got, I got some goosebumps from that. It legitimately feels scary. Whack! Um, well. Chris is like, I'm good. Hello. Hi. Please don't hit me. I have done nothing to you. Uh, we're at caution. Okay, we should be fine. Let's just... Let's just get out of here. Because that is an unkillable enemy. That was freaky, right? Okay, I'm just going to grab this herb and use it because she did thwack me. There we go, back at green. What was that? Oh, there's zombies here. Sorry, I'm getting turned around. We're going the wrong way. That's I think that's the, the path back to Lisa's uh, thing. Oh, by the way, that was Lisa Trevor. The Lisa that was mentioned in Trevor's diary. Yep, that's her. Very tragic. And we keep coming back to her, her house. I'm sorry I keep getting turned around. just like Chris come back there is a, an enemy up here it's a dead zombie okay whatever great job Chris critical hit they now have no head all right so we took a little uh We'll trip down this new area. Now let's go back and go to where we actually need to go. This is an interesting thing the game the game does where it's like they wanted to add more to it. What's going on over here? 
when the wind sweeps across the earth. Windcrest! But they add little areas here where it's like, you know what you need to do. Like, you know what you need to do. You know where you need to go. But they added little extra things to do. Like at the beginning. Sword key. Um, how do you get that in the original game? Or, well, armor key. Ar we'll just go with armor key. So, like... I think the sword key is get gotten in an early room with Chris, and you just unlock stuff. But instead, you have to... You know, you have to go outside, and you have to get the arrowhead in that new area they added. Get the arrowhead, go outside, and get the key. And then you have to do other stuff to be able to get what you need to get the uh, armor key. You have to go outside to the balcony and use the dog whistle. Get the dog whistle and all that. Where it's like, here are these key things that you need, that you know you need because you played the original game. But we're adding these extra areas so you have to do a couple extra things to be able to get them. So it's like, we got all of the original content in here, you know, remade and redone. But we've got these extra things that you get to go and explore and do to get what you need for the main th thing. So two plus and three. You can't use the item as is. Can we combine them? No. Okay. Trying to think. And I'm coming up with nothing. Maybe we can put them back. We cannot put them back. Hmm, okay. We'll have to come back to that. For now, let's go use the square crank, crank and head towards the guardhouse. We'll figure that out later. So, sneak past the dogs, and it should be a pretty uh, quick walk to the guardhouse. Pardon me, dogs. I'm just gonna... Oh, we can't go over there. Okay. You missed! You know, it's funny. When I play the, the all, all the Resident Evil games... I never once realized that you're you're not supposed to kill everything. Because a lot of times I do that. And I'm like, oh no, you're just supposed to pick your battles and not fight most things so you can preserve ammo. Alright, there we go. Getting rid of the water here in this very pixelated cutscene. Very much like the original game. Even the GOG versions have the really pixelated cinematics for stuff like that. All right, let's go. We probably would have boxed some of that crest stuff to so we can figure out the puzzle. No falling snakes? That's weird. There were falling snakes there in the original. 
whatever. But if we, if Le if Lisa weren't in her house, I would have gone back to that item box. Oh, hey, look at that. There are blue oaks growing here. Hmm. Wonder what that means. Wonder what that could possibly mean. Crows, knock it off. I'm just trying to figure out where, where I'm supposed to be going. That's where we just came from. There we go. Road to the guardhouse. But, you know, if, if... I would have gone back to that, uh... Oh, we can't pick it up anyways. That box room where Lisa was, but... Oh, there's the, the falling snakes! But, you know, since it would have been such a hassle to backtrack to the mansion's box room and back because of that broken door, we decided, you know what, let's just do it next time. All right, we are officially in the guardhouse. You know, part two of the game? Because <laughs> the original game was like, mansion, guardhouse. Mansion revisited. Underground. Laboratory. Bunch of blue herbs here. Here we go. It's just like the original, so this should be our save room. Beautiful. Uh, first of all, we need to go to the item box. Oh, it's set up a little differently. It was just a square room before. We're gonna put... Do we need the crank here for anything? I don't think so. So let's box it. Let's pull out the handgun magazine so we can refill it. Even though I don't think there are any zombies here. No, no, there are. There are. Alright. What we got here? We've got... More ink ribbons. So we're back up to 12. Another flash grenade for self-defense. Another first aid spray for future healing. Anything over here? No. Okay, how many full heals do we have? Let's see, we got one, two, three, four. Potentially a lot more. Good, just making sure I still had it. Let's go ahead and save. in a, yet another new place. Save successful. And we will tackle the guardhouse and our very favorite enemies that show up here next time on Resident Evil HD on Nintendo Switch.